Okay, so today we're going to look at uh, what is uh, the test and the actions and what's the use of these actions. And what's the different uh, types of actions. And then in reality, right, how we're going to start developing the test script. You know, like um, before we start developing uh, the tests for a project, um, the first thing is like you need to understand and analyze the test cases that needs to be automated. So this is the the, the initial step. But you need to understand what are the test cases that you're going to automate. So what this analysis involves. So for example, you'll get different uh, the test case like this. And um, you'll get uh, different the test cases, um, open application, and say login and log out, then close application. So this is one test scenario. Similarly, like you'll get one more test scenario, like open application, login, and say create order. This is the test scenario too. Then you get, uh, say, one more. And here, in doing any login, instead you're going to register um, user, and then say logout, and then close application. So like this way, like you'll get uh, different uh, test cases in the project. Uh, as an automation tester, your responsibilities are you're going to develop automation test scripts for these test scenarios, right? Given these test scenarios, and so what is your strategy? How you're going to develop the test scripts for these kind of the test, test scenarios? That's what the analysis involved while you are looking at the test scenarios, while you analyze, you are going to identify, like what are, identify the common steps. What are the common steps across the test cases? So this is a very fundamental and very important step in any automation project identifying the common steps or identifying the repeating steps across the test cases. Then we are going to prepare the, the, the reusable the actions or the functions for these repeating steps. Okay, we're going to create either a reusable action or the function for these repeating steps. So that's why like if you look at say, for example, like if given these these three test scenarios, right? And what are the repeating steps? You see the open application is repeating everywhere, login, log out, close application, see these are the things, the the common steps. Right from this uh, scenarios, open application is repeating, so login is doing, and logout, close application. You see, these are the common steps. Then you are going to come up with the reusable actions for these scenarios. That means you are going to reuse those things again and again in all the test scripts. What we are going to develop. There are there are certain benefits with, by doing this way, right? Instead of recording each and every test again and again, by doing all this duplication, 
like you're going to create one reusable action and then call that. Like anyway, we're going to start today like the reusable actions, but we're going to do, we're going to discuss the functions later when we talk about the VB scripting that time. We go into the details. How you're going to write the functions and then start using the functions and what's the difference between the reusable action and the function that we discuss later. So given these, like how are you going to write the reusable actions? So like so you're going to create a, a new test. And then so you're going to name this one something like say um, I'm going to name this say web web application the reusable actions. Web application the reusable actions. Okay, so now we're going to start with um, say start with record. Then so here you're going to provide like what application you're going to open and what's the browser, right? So the the application URL and the browser, and hit OK. So now we are creating multiple actions. What are the common steps that we identified? We are creating different actions for those steps. See, in this recording toolbar, see, there is a, you can create multiple actions. So the one that I start with, uh, the login part, right? So click on this sign on link, right? And enter the username and enter the password. Click submit. So this goes to one action. Right, the login action. Then you can create one more action in the same test call to new action. Like from this recording toolbar, you're going to select call to new action. And this action name, I'm going to say um, sign off. So this is the sign off action. Okay, so that is the so that's the action name, right? So sign up and hit OK. And what are the things that you are recording now? It gets recorded into this sign up to action. So you're going to hit this sign up link, and you can create one more action in the same test. Call to new action, and this would be close application. Right, that's the action name and hit OK and you're going to close your browser instance and then stop recording. See like when you when you look at uh, the test script now you have these multiple actions. See these are the, these are the different actions like action 1, sign off and close application. So you can also just rename this action, right click on this then select action properties and you're going to rename this instead of action one you're going to properly name them saying that this is the login action and going to hit OK so now you have this multiple actions right what this login action contains login part of the script like hit this uh, sign on link username password and those things Similarly, if you look at um, the sign off, so it contains uh, just a sign off. Uh, this. I think something happened. Okay, I think here like here to get just give me one sec. Because I deleted by mistake that script. Okay. 
So anyway, so this is the script that contains in the sign up and this is the the close application. So we're going to close this um, application. That way like each action contains uh, the, the the related script. So that's how like you're going to define uh, what is an action is. It is a logical unit. So that contains the steps, like what are the steps that, we, that you're going to perform. And the action is going to perform certain task. And by default, all actions are the reusable actions. By default, all actions are the reusable actions. That means you can use these actions in any test. That's why like if you look at and select any action, right click on select action properties, see by default that reusable action, the checkbox is checked. That means you can use this action in any test. Okay. And by default all the actions are reusable. Then how are we going to define the test is the test contains multiple actions. So test is a collection of multi actions. Okay. It's a collection of multi actions. So it contains multiple actions. The test contains multiple actions. So here like you're going to define all those actions and how are we going to write the scripts using these actions, right? Because you have these multiple actions. Now coming back to the test scenarios, like we created multiple actions, and then how are we going to develop this test script? Like say, if you look at the first is the test case one, then what you do, like say, create a new test, and so you're going to name this one, this is the test case one. Right, so that is the test case one, and say create. And now we are going to call those actions in this particular test. You see, this is the test that is empty, and how are we going to reuse those things? Call the existing actions. Go to this design menu, and select call to those existing actions. And go and select. So click on this um, three dots button and you're going to select the script that contains this multiple actions. So this is the script of what we just created, right? So you're going to select the test and now it's going to show you those multiple actions, like those reusable actions. See, these reusable actions, even if you look at this icon, they're kind of the Lego blocks, right? You know, like the 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 Lego block, right? That means once you have these uh, pieces ready, you can build whatever the shape you want, right? Pretty much use the same block. That's what I get to the concept here. So you are first creating these small pieces in the application instead of writing the instead of recording the big test, right? You are creating these small blocks, the small pieces in the test which are nothing but your reusable actions. Then you're connecting these reusable actions together to develop this large test. So that's why when you look at it, this is the first test case, right? Um, you open application, log in, log out, and close application. Those are the four steps. So now you're calling those actions. First one is the login. You select that login reusable action and hit OK. So that if you look at that action is called. That login reusable action is called. Even if you look at, say, I'm going to write some kind of the, the comment here. Like, it's always useful. You can write the comments whenever you develop the test scripts. It's also very much required in the projects. Commenting is nothing but you're going to put single quote and you can write some information saying that calling 
login reusable action from this test so this is the test name this is called the commenting part next you put single quote and write so the things appears in the green color that is called a comment it gives a better readability of your test script right tomorrow when you look at your this script right by reading this comment you can easily understand what this line is doing here right you are calling this login reusable action from this particular test so this way you can call multiple actions again go to this design call to existing action and then you're going to select the same test like say web multiple reusable actions and this time you're going to call like say sign off see that sign off action is called then finally you're going to call the close application so this is the action you want to call You see, so you called this sign off action. So this is um, the sign off and so calling the sign off reusable action. This one is the close app. This is the close app reusable action from this test. So this way you're calling these multiple actions um, from the same test. That way you're going to reuse these things across all the test scripts. So this is this what like your first test is done. Like what is the kind of advantage while doing this? Okay, let's uh, write it down. Um, this is the kind of the, the Lego block. Action is also a Lego block and the test like in this is other element technology anyway so you're going to connect uh, those the lego blocks right which are nothing but the reusable actions it's in order to develop the test scripts In order to develop the test okay so that's how like you're going to develop uh, the things like uh, and what's the difference between the action and the test is now we're talking about like why we have to do this way like why can't I just uh, record each and every test by following these steps the advantages are one thing is like the test looks very simple right what are the tests that you're going to develop it looks very simple right it just contains the calls to the actions you're not doing hard code recording in every test so test looks very simple and also you can avoid the duplication there is no redundant work right you're not going to record the same login thing again and again instead you can simply call that login part in the test wherever is needed and test development is very easy right so you need not worry about like uh, how you're going to record the things because you already have these reusable actions ready then you can simply call those reusable actions that way you can develop the test very quickly just simply calling those reusable actions in the test and the other important thing is test the maintenance is very easy 
this is very important thing like why we follow this kind of strategy the test maintenance part what is maintenance part say like this way like you're, you're you're developing your test scripts right even when you look at uh, the next test script again they are also you're using the login action right you develop uh, the test script again the new test and this is test case 2 test case 2 then create and again you call those reactions here also In this particular test also, you're going to call those existing actions. So select that and what are the actions you want to call? We're going to call those actions. At this way, we're going to call the actions. So what is the kind of advantage you get while developing these test scripts by using those user actions? How this maintenance part is very easy. See, tomorrow, like, because the changes might happen anytime during the project, right? The changes are going to happen anytime. That means uh, the functionality gets changed, or sometimes you will get um, um, the developers keep changing the functionality. They might uh, add something, or they, they, they are going to delete something, right? Part of this then how you're going to how your script is going to handle such changes so that is where see if you're using these reusable actions right then the advantage is if something like say developer says okay on this application uh, the login part right what they're going to do is um, they say like we are replacing this sign on to the logon link okay so they say um, they are going to they are going to change this sign on to the logon link. Then, how is like how are you going to make the changes easily in your test script? Because you have to accommodate these changes very easily without much impact, right? Because the changes happens anytime. You have to think of how you can easily modify your test scripts accordingly. So that is where, if you look at, you are using this kind of the reusable actions across the test scripts, then if the changes happens, all you have to do is open that original test, right? Wherever just you created these reusable actions, go to that original test, and then make the change in the login action, because they are saying they are replacing this sign on with the logon link that's a change in the application so you're going to make the change in this original action saying that this is the logon link so once you make this change then automatically this change will get updated in all the test scripts because you are calling this reusable action in all your test scripts so that when you're not going to make the change at multiple places. Instead, you make the change at one place in the reusable action. Remember, like once you make this change, see when you when you open the other test scripts, wherever you call this action, right? So this is this way, like you're calling this login reusable action. You see the change is already there. That way, you know, the maintenance part is very, very it's, we are going to save a lot of time. Otherwise, if you don't have this kind of the reusable actions using in your test scripts, then if something is changed, like you record each and every test by looking at these scenarios, right? You record each and every test. Then tomorrow, if something is changed like this, then you end up with modifying each and every test script. So that's not going to work. Because here like we are talking about just three test scripts, but in reality you will get hundreds of test scripts. But how many scripts you are going to modify every time when something you change in the application? 
So that is why this concept of the reusable actions came into the picture. Okay, so the advantage with this you know, the text looks very simple and you can avoid any kind of the duplication. No redundant work here and test development and the maintenance part is very easy. All right, any questions? Is this clear? Basically, you are on you are on mute um, because I also do the recording, right? These sessions. That's why we, I want to avoid um, the kind of echo in the sessions. But you can you can use the chat window to ask any questions. Okay. All right. So, what are different uh, the types of um, yeah? You are going to get this the the notes. What I'm typing here, like you'll get um, this um, this class notes. Um, yeah, and also like um, uh, I will, I will ask them to upload the videos also. Tech support people, um, once they upload the videos, they will share the link where you can watch those videos also, the recordings. Okay, so what are these uh, different types of actions? So the reusable actions. And uh, the non-reusable actions. Reusable, non-reusable, external actions. and at the local actions. Okay, so these are the four different um, types of actions and what's the difference between them is uh, the reusable actions. So this is the action that can be used within the same test. and also can be used in other test. Okay, so the reusable actions can be used in the same test or you can also use in other test. Whereas the non-reusable actions used within the same test. Okay, that means you cannot use the non-reusable actions in other test. So external actions can define the action from 
other test. Okay, external actions are actions from other test, and the local action is local to the test. So by default, like here, if you look at, uh, we called the reusable actions, right? So in these, like we call three different actions, like the login, sign up, and close application. So these are the actions that is coming from other tests. If you go to this solution explorer, see all these actions will be added under external actions because these actions are from other tests. From which test these actions are called? This test. And this is an external test. That's why these are called the external actions. Because actions from other test. Close application login and sign off. So these are all the reusable actions. And then if you create any actions locally, like suppose if you do like design and say you want to create a new action, right? You're creating a new action. So that becomes a local action. You see, these are all the local actions. So this is also a, a local action. Whereas these are all external actions. Actions that is coming from other tests is called an external action. And the action that is local to the test, these are all the local actions. Okay, so external, local. And then, so here, what is the difference? Um, you, what are the different different modes to call the actions? What are the different ways or the different modes to call the actions? One way is call is existing action. Call as copy of action. Existing copy. Right? Call as existing or call as copy of action. So what are the difference between these two? You see like say okay to differentiate let me create a new test. Right, so I'm going to call it existing and select that uh, action, uh, the script and you're going to call which action you want to, right, and then hit OK. So this way this action is called but you are calling from other test that way it's added as a look external action. So when you're, you call as existing action, then that action is read only. Existing actions are the read only. That means wherever you call, you cannot change anything. Suppose like if you want to put a different username here, right, instead of test one, I want to change this username to something else, but I cannot do that. I cannot modify this one. This is read only, right? I cannot delete or I cannot change these values. That's what the read only. The external actions are read only. Suppose if you want to make the change, because okay, you want to change this username, wherever you call this action, then you're going to do call as copy of action instead of say call as existing action. So resources and sorry. So you're going to uh, here. so you're going to design call to copy of action. Okay? Instead of existing, you're going to call to copy of action. Again, you're selecting this the test and you're selecting that action, which one you want to call, 
the particular action and hit OK. So you see, whenever you do call to copy of action, it added as a local. Whereas when it took call to existing, there is an external. Then copy of this login is, you see this is the copy of login, right? This is read write. That means you can make the change now because it's a local action. So okay, now I want to put a different name, right? Say Sundex Mercury. Now you can modify it. You can change the users and the password sort of things because this is read write call to copy of action is read write this is read only and this is the read write okay so local actions are the read write modes you can modify it where the external actions are read only you cannot change Then now let's um, speak like what are the pros and cons, right? What are the advantages and the advantages with these different things? So what are the advantages with call to existing action? What are the advantages with call to existing action so the 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 one thing is like with this existing actions right wherever you call still you have you see this this is what actually if you look at the difference right this is called to existing action and this is called to copy of action if you look at it, call to existing action has reference to the original action. That means still it is linked to the original action, to the original test. Right? This particular action is still linked to the original test. That means the advantage here, if you do call to existing action, if something is changed in the application, right? If something is changed in the application, like the one that we talked, so they change this uh, sign on to the logon link. Then you're going to make the change in the original action in one place. Because it's already it has the link to the original test. That way the maintenance part is very less here, right? Because the maintenance of maintenance is easy. In the case of uh, this one, the maintenance is um, easy in existing actions. Then, what are the kind of the day advantages here? What are the day advantages with existing actions? So, it's just read only. So, we cannot modify the action right wherever it's called I cannot modify the action right because I cannot do this suppose like say okay I call your action as existing but the thing is like I want to modify it here like I want I have my own username I want to input my username here but I cannot do that it's just read only Okay, so that's a kind of the limitation with these existing actions. Then read write, then what is the copy of action, right? What's the advantage? So it's the read write. That way, just I can modify the action, right? Wherever I call, I can modify the action. Where is a read write? So I copy this action. Okay, now I can change what are the data or something. Like I can I can modify the action now with copy of action. Then what are the kind of the advantages then? What 
what are the disadvantages with copy of action? Because you are creating a copy of it, even if you look at, there is no reference, right? It is disconnected from your original test, where you create a copy of it. There is no reference, and it is just disconnected from the original test. That means, if something is changed in this application like this, right? If something is changed, then what you have to do? You have to modify each and every test where wherever you copy it. Right? Because this is a local action and there is no reference to the original test. That way, wherever just you created a copy of it, you have to modify each and every test. That way the maintenance part is fused in this case. The maintenance is not that easy. So that way here, like see, whatever the advantage here, you see that becomes a, a limitation here and, and vice versa. So this is the kind of the, the limitations with existing and copy of actions. Then here is my question, right? Then what is the way that I want to get both the advantages. That means I want to make um, the maintenance part easy. What is the way to maintain the test easily and at the same time want to modify the action also. That means we are looking at both the features, right? Okay, I want to take advantage here and also the advantage here. That means I want my maintenance part should be easily way to maintain, right? So this maintenance part of the test is easily and at the same time I want to modify my action also. That, that means you want this feature and also you want this advantage. Then how is it possible? What's the way? So that is where we're going to use the action parameters. So that the action parameters is going to bring both the advantages into the test script. Okay, so action parameters is the answer. So we're going to discuss uh, like how these action parameters will be done and how we're going to define the parameters and how to call these actions with the parameters. So that part we're going to